Cal, can you address the, the, the uh, three transactions you made that you brought in two receivers on whatever day it was? And then uh, today, the, the decision to release uh, Blue Sellington. I'm assuming those are all uh, interconnected. Yeah, you, know, you know, the you know the first day, I don't know if it was the first day. I think it was actually when we lost BJ. You know, he went down. We still haven't decided how long he's going to be out. Um, but we knew we were down a little bit there. Um, and then the fact, you know, Bruce had done a good job with us. Um, but we had a bunch of guys who were very similar in their skill set, kind of the same type of players. And we, we had to get some different skill sets in. And I thought, um, give Bruce a chance to go somewhere else. And he handled everything great. He's been a great person here in the short time we've been with him. He came back and battled from some tough injuries and gave himself a chance to go for a week. But, um, you know, we were a little too loaded at that spot. And so we want to get some different guys in here with some different skill sets and um, mix up the group a little bit. Talk about different skill sets. What exactly uh, do you mean at that receiver position? Um, well, you, you don't want all guys. You know, you, you want fast guys. You want quick guys. You want tall guys. You want guys with great hands, guys who are quick, guys who can just flat out run. Um, different um, types of ability to use on certain plays. Uh, I thought we were a little front loaded with um, some more inside receivers um, with the slot type position. I had a little bit of a backup there, and we're trying to get some other guys who can play a little bit more on the outside. Intend to end practice with wind sprints, or is that a function of the wood, maybe the chippiness of them that was going on? No, I, no, that was a plan. You know, yeah, um, you know, yesterday, you know, yesterday we did move the ball for the first time, and um, you know, I thought our team seemed in pretty good shape. And then um, when we did move the ball, we went on a few long drives, and I could see guys getting a little bit gassed. So I thought we just had to condition a little bit more, and it wasn't a punishment or anything. It just it seemed like we needed it. Were you okay with it being a little rougher today? It seemed like it was more physical. Uh, yes, I was. You know, I wanted them to turn it up a little bit. I believe it was our fourth day in pads, I think. Um, you know, I, th I think guys are getting comfortable with it. You know, we had a day off two days ago. I um, was trying to get the idea of how we want to practice, how to be physical, but still not take people to the ground. And uh, I thought they did a better job of that today. How did Ruben look playing with the first reps to you? Of the first team? Uh, he, he, had, uh, he, did, he did solid. You know, I'll watch more when I see the tape, but you know, we threw him at a different position today um, for the first time. Threw him at some of the Mike linebacker. Um, we rested a number of guys, so gave him some ops. Um, I thought he did a good job. We just threw him into there and we started moving a lot. He's got to make all the calls. And I think, like anybody, his first time at I think he had a few busts, but um, I think they're good stuff for him to get in and watch the tape and learn from. That, wasn't, that was planned? That wasn't because Brock was practice? No, we, yeah, we gave, um, you know, Bo got the afternoon or this morning off, so we were down one anyways at the mic position. So we we're going to move Ruben over there, let him run with the second team, get some mic reps, make some of the calls. It's, it's, it's similar to the techniques and stuff they have to do, but the communication is different. Um, so we want to give reps of that with the second team, and then uh, Brock went down in practice, so Ruben bumped up. How yesterday in practice, I know you guys had that uh, defense isn't allowed to take the, the runner uh, to the ground, but uh, Carlos Hyde kind of, but level uh, Witherspoon, well, what is, are you okay with Carlos doing that? And what is, how is Akello or the defense guy supposed to protect themselves in those situations? Yeah, I was, you know, there's a fine line between that. And, um, you know, I, I kind of, I didn't mind it yesterday. I thought um, Carlos taught him a little bit of a lesson that I think will end up helping him in the long run. Um, it's very tough for anybody when a guy gets, especially a guy like Carlos, um, there's about 15 yards between him and Carlos and the guy's getting a running start and you're sitting there waiting on him. Um, that's going to happen, especially if you're not allowed to go at his legs. Um, so what I like is that Carlos kind of taught him that. So the next time he doesn't sit there and take out his legs, he better recognize the cutback a lot faster. When the outside receiver cracks on the safety, he better replace that guy a lot faster. So now Carlos has about a three yard head start instead of a 15 yard head start. Um, I don't care who you are. If Carlos gets a 15 yard head start on you and lowers his head and you're not allowed to go low on him, that will be the end result. So it's about recognizing a crack and crack replacing, getting right in the hip of that receiver and getting it on Carlos before he gets that steam going. So that, that collision shouldn't have happened at the goal line. It should have happened. Yes. Field. Yeah, and, and that does happen. I mean, it's it's not just a Kello. I mean, when receivers go out and dig out safeties that are coming down in eight-man fronts, um, now we've blocked the safety and we've gained a man, so they have to gain a man. Now that corner, now his receiver he's guarding is blocking the safety, so he's got to shoot his guns and replace the safety. And if you sit there and wait for a big guy to come to you, that's going to be the end result. So um, I think that was a good learning experience for um, Akello. And I know it wasn't fun, but hopefully you'll appreciate Carlos for it in the long run. Like Vance McDonald also got into Akello today at the goal line, bounced off of Brock, and then went in there at Irvini. How's Vance McDonald's camp coming along, and what is he showing the last few days? 
Uh, it's just been good to get advanced out there. You know, we didn't have much of OTAs. Um, and now to get that out there consistently every day, going on the, how many every days we've had, um, he's gotten more used to the offense. He's gotten, gotten a chance to put himself in position um, to make some plays. You know, for the first, you know, he, came, he was in and out in OTAs with a couple things that happened. So he was kind of spinning a little bit. And now to go through it, have a little bit more of the offseason to get away, come back here to the meetings again, actually get some practice reps. I think he's gotten better each day the more he's got comfortable. Some of the tight ends, do they do work before practice on their ball catching? Uh, yes. Yeah, we usually give all the position coaches about a half an hour with the guys before practice. Um, most of the guys use it as meeting time and script review. And um, yeah, Coach Embry likes to go out there and get on the sled and do some extra work, stuff they don't really get. You know, tight ends are always, their individual time always gets um, taken from them because half the time they got to go with the quarterbacks and work on the pass game. Then they got to go with the old linemen and work on some blocking stuff. And it's hard for them to really get their own time. So I kind of, that's where Embry finds it. Uh, where's DeAndre Smelter now compared to when you first got him? Um, I, you know, he's DeAndre works as hard at knowing all the positions, knowing everything. You know, he he excels in the slot, but uh, he's smart enough and works hard enough at it to run all three. Uh, he's a guy that um, you know I have a lot of confidence in. Whenever someone's down, it doesn't matter what position he's had at. You know, he's going to know how to do his job. He works at it. He's been working at it since he got here. And um, when you do that for so long, it becomes second nature. That gives you a chance to make more plays and. I think the better you know your assignment, um, the better you get um, as a player physically. And I think that's happened to him slowly, but it's coming along. He's almost still kind of playing catch up from being in a triple option offense in, in college, or do you, is he kind of settling in as a wide receiver? I think he's settling in as a wide receiver. You know, I mean, we've worked with him on a bunch of routes, and it's, you know, guys aren't ever going to get better <laughs> unless, you know, they. Are doing it all on their own too. You know, we work with guys as hard as we can, but DeAndre is a guy who, whether we're there or not, he's out there. He's thinking about every single route, thinking about his steps, how to set guys different ways, how to run it differently versus coverages. Um, he works at it as hard as anyone I've been around, and um, that's why I feel like we're noticing he looks like a receiver. What happened at the end of practice and, um, with that play, and was that one of the reasons why you, you wanted to end right there? No, it's. Um, you know, the, I thought the play was over because it was third down, and I thought they stopped us, and we run out of room going that way. We don't really have an end zone on that side. Um, so I don't want to run into the fence. Um, but I wanted to keep them out until the defense stopped us. Um, then the ref called a, some type of penalty. I didn't really know what it was. And I, I think he ended up calling a personal foul. So I was going to make the defense stay out there. Um, so I just had him rehuddle, and I was going to make him go. But then the ref waved it off. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but it was the NFL refs out there today. We have them for today and the next two days. So I'll get to meet with them later. But once he waved it off, I knew it was time for a field goal. So got the defense off the field. I also saw some red zone 11-11 today. I asked you before about situational. I mean, this is a pretty long time to go without too much situational, two-minute or even live field goal. Mm -hmm. that, again, has that been something you said, let's just get the base offense and base defense? Yeah, yeah, I really believe you got to set a foundation. And um, that's why it was very important to us to go four days just setting the foundation of our offense, our defense, and our special teams, which is your first and second down. You know, what's your bread and butter? And um, the, when you get that down, then you can venture to other areas. And we, we've hit it all up and walked through and stuff in the afternoons, um, which is more assignment based. But, you know, I don't want to come out and start jumping in to the red zone and things right away. I want to make sure we can get to the red zone first. Um, and, and if we can get to the red zone, then I want to focus on being good in the red zone. Um, but it's, it's just a process. We got it all mapped out. Uh, we plan it all out. We're going to get the same amount of time on all the stuff. It's just how do you go about it? And I would just believe in um, there's a process of teaching, and you want to start earlier and build your way up to that. Oh, Mark, when do you have your uh, quarterbacks resisting? Why don't I? Yeah. Um, I think you'd ask, have to ask other people why they have their quarterbacks use wristbands. Um, you know, it depends. And, you know, a lot of teams that I know of who their quarterbacks use wristbands is because they're their play caller doesn't call the formation. It doesn't say the whole play. Um, they just say a number, and they put it on the quarterback to then look down, and then he reads it to them. Um, those are most of the people that I found out. But um, we don't need to do that because I, I just call the whole play, and they repeat it. Um, I don't just say 14. I say the formation and the play, and then they read it. So there's no need to look down and have a cheat sheet. They just have to repeat what they hear in their helmet. Um, some other, I really don't know the other reasons why people would have a wristband, but. That's why we don't. Is it so that the if the headset ever went down, we would try to run one out to him very fast. <laughs> like in the sense that he hears the play and he can kind of visualize it before he spits it out. Yes, and it's quicker. Like I want him getting the huddle together, not looking down at his arm, going 
and there's a lot, there's, there's more than 10 plays. I don't have to flip through a bunch of stuff. It takes time, and we want to go as fast as we can, and I just want to, I want to say it. I want them to repeat it after me and get to the line of scrimmage, and sometimes when you put that on quarterbacks and you put more pressure on, hey, here's the number, but if you're on the right hash, you got to say all this stuff the other way. Um, you got to say left instead of right. You got to say three jet instead of two jet. You got to say 19 instead of 18, and in the heat of battle, sometimes that can get tough for a guy. It gets tough for a play caller also. But if you're doing it all the time, all week, um, for most of your life, you, you get better at it. And I'd just rather the quarterback worry about all the hard stuff. Uh, do you script first 15, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I've always scripted. I usually try to give an opening 24. Um, but I don't think ever in my life have I gone 1 through 24. You just try to give guys an idea of what the game plan is, where you plan on going with this. Um, it's mainly more so players can feel comfortable with the play callers thinking so they can prepare. But I always start out with the first play, and I usually go to the second play too. But very quickly, when you see what you're getting on defense, how they're playing formations, how they're playing personnel groupings, after series, we might have just finished plays one through five, but I'll tell the coaches, hey, we're, we're skipping to 19. All right, they're playing this differently. We want to get in this personnel group. We'll go to there. And then I might come back later to play seven. So it's, that just gives ideas players an idea of how to prepare, kind of what you're thinking, so they don't have to read your mind. And, um, but by no means are we just going to stick with it and go. It, it's always set on what we're going against. Coach, last one, guys. You must have imagined what it would be like to be a head coach. Uh, you've done it for a while. What's different? Um, you know, I've been enjoying it. You know, it's just it's fun to come to work every day. And you know, I always come in thinking to prepare for the meetings and put tapes together and um, do stuff that I've been doing my whole career. But, you know, other stuff pops up, and you know you got to deal with some things that I haven't, and I actually enjoy it because, you know, I think some of the hardest things for me as a position coach or coordinator is when you know stuff that's going on, and you know you want to fix it, but you're really not in the position to fix it, and you kind of just got to deal with it and internalize it, and you know it's kind of an enjoyable for me to come to work every day that if something's bothering me, regardless of what it is, I can go talk to the person. I can address it. I can try to fix it and have a solution, or I can realize, you know what, this isn't a, that big of a deal. I can let it go. And um, just mentally and stuff, I, it makes it a little bit more fun knowing that um, you're in a better position to solve problems. Do you consider using a wristband when you play in Seattle, where things seem extremely loud, and over the headset, maybe the quarterback might miss a few of the words in your call? Yeah, if, if, yeah, if they ever couldn't hear, I mean, that's what we'd have to do. But um, I play there a number of times, and it's never been an issue. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.